We've used many types, standard types, in the projects so far in this course. Things like integer, string, double, and so on. But sometimes it's useful to define your own custom type. And that's what we're doing in this project. It's the user type project. If you load up the code, and you can see at the top of the main unit here, I've defined four types. str10 is a string. And notice after string, I've put 10 in square brackets. That means set this string to a maximum of 10 characters. And str5 is a string with a maximum of five characters. Now, in traditional Pascal, strings had a fixed length of 255 characters. And that's equivalent to the short string data type that you find in Free Pascal or in Delphi. But in modern implementations of Pascal, if you don't put a size between square brackets, as I have here, then a string can, in principle, be just about any length, limited only to the amount of memory available to store that string on your computer. And that's sometimes useful, but it's not always useful. In particular, when you come to storing strings on disk, when you're saving and loading strings, it's much safer, simpler, and more convenient to have fixed length strings. And we look at that shortly. Now, the next type I've declared here is called an enumerated type. An enumerated type has the identifier name, days and week here, equals, and then between parentheses, a series of values. That's a series of descriptive identifiers. And they can be more or less whatever you want. And so here, as I'm doing, representing the weekdays, I put from MON, for short for Monday, right up to SUN, short for Sunday. Those values are just identifiers that I can use in my code. They just have a descriptive purpose. So rather than have days in week as integers from 0 to 6, which are not very descriptive, I have names for each day. And then finally, I've got uppercase. Uppercase can be a character, any character within the range. Here's the range specifier again, the two dots. Any character within a range from capital A to capital Z. And remember from the ASCII chart that we looked at earlier, characters do have an order. They have a numeric order in the ASCII table. And here, characters from A to Z define the, char the uppercase characters of the alphabet. So the benefit of having user-defined types of this sort is one, clarity. It makes your code easier to read by giving them descriptive names. Two, type checking. If you put in a value which you don't think should be acceptable, like if you put in the name of a day which isn't a real day, or if you put in a character which is not within the range that you've defined, then the compiler will either warn you or it'll show it as an error. And later on, we look at more complicated types where you can have multiple bits of data all stored up together in a record type. But for now, let's stick with the types I've got here. And let's run the program and see what happens. So it's building. Now notice it's got already a couple of warnings down here. So it's warning me that I've tried to assign a bigger string than the, the variable of the S10 uh, of the str10 data type can hold, because that can only hold 10 characters, whereas hello world, including the space, has 11 characters. And it's provided another warning down here. All right, let's have a look at the program. So I click button 1. And you can see, indeed, that the string has been truncated to 10 characters for s10 and 5 characters for s5. The letter x is shown as the uh, character of uppercase data type. And today, as shown as Wednesday, now I need to explain that. Because, in fact, to show that, I've called, you can see the day str function, passing to it the today variable. This is the function up here. All that does is it receives the variable as a parameter, day, and it's of the days in week type. And remember, that can have any value from MON to SUN, as declared up here. These are Enumerable values, they are ordinal types, they are countable. So just like integers or characters, they are available for use in a case test. And that's what I've done here. So all I've done is I've checked what the value of the day variable, the day parameter is, 
and I've set a more descriptive string as a result, and it's that string that is displayed. Notice here that result is the way of returning, one way of returning a value from a function. Normally, I would not have more than one place in a function that could return a value, because that can, in complicated functions, be quite confusing. It's better to have only one place where a value is returned. As this is such a simple function, I've used result many times, but if you wanted to avoid that, you could try out this alternative version, and here I've just declared a local variable, and that's what I assign the string to, and I have only one place right at the end of the function where the result is returned. Okay, so that's the day str function. Now, let's see what happens if, if I try to use an incorrect value according to the type. Remember that today can have MON, TUE, etc. And say I wanted to send, set the day to SUN, S-U-N for Sunday, but I mistype it and I put FUN instead. Is that permissible? Well, let's try it. And no, it's not. It's the compiler spotted that an error has been found. So that's an example of how the type checking can work in my favor to try and find errors that have been introduced into my program. Now, what about letter? I define that as being from capital A to capital Z. What if I use a lowercase? Is that going to cause a problem? OK, so it said there's a range check error, and it's not allowing it. Now, in fact, the strictness of the errors located by the compiler can be tailored to your requirements. So I've got in the compiler options here, I've got range as a check to be made. So if something is beyond the range that I've defined, that will be regarded as an error. Let me just uncheck that and try compiling again. So this time it compiles, and the range checking has been demoted to a mere warning. So it still warns me, but it allows it. So. As a general rule, when you're starting out with learning Pascal, I'd suggest that you actually leave that range checking option checked because it will spot the kind of error that I've introduced here and elevate it to, an, to a real error, which is more obvious to spot in your code rather than just a warning which is gathered down in the messages window. So that's button one. Let's see what button two does. OK, so it sh shows the days of the week. And look at the code for button two. And the code for button 2 sets up a for loop, and it goes from 0 to 6. So you can see that, in fact, as I said earlier, days in week does have a countable property. I can count through the days in week and display their value by sending the result to the day str function, which I wrote. Finally, button 3. Button 3 is a bit different. Button 3, I've defined CD data type. It's a local type, so it's only available within this procedure. And then I've created an array of CD. Now, in this case, CD is just a fixed-sized string, and the array is just being filled up with 1 to 10 CDs, which are just descriptive strings. So it's not particularly interesting or useful in its present form. What I want to do is create a CD database that has more information on the CDs, maybe the record label, plus the price of the CD, all wrapped up in a single data item. And I show that later in one of the projects in the tutorials that come with this chapter.